Here's one from Robert. Uh, I used to love watching Rick versus Brad Armstrong matches. Uh, ask Rick how good of a wrestler he was and if Brad is one of the most undervalued workers of the day. Incredible worker and one of the most undervalued performers of all time. It's he was a rough. He, Brad Armstrong was a rough draft of Ricky Steamboat. Okay, what a great compliment, man! Yeah. I love that rough phrase. draft. Rough no, draft. He wasn't Ricky Steamboat, but shit, he could do anything. Drop kick in the top of the head, sell. Nice guy. I mean, fuck, what a loss. I mean, I, I mean, I used to send Road Dog. You can watch. I've wrestled Brad for an hour a couple of times. I mean, you know, he, he got put in that position a few times, but. Ah, yeah, he's, and what a great kid. Unbelievable. G wants to know, good day, gentlemen. I remember going to the Philadelphia Civic Center and JCP having an autograph session with the four horsemen. What was it like being so popular, but also having the balance of being bad guys? It was fabulous. It was fabulous. They, they, we were popular because we were so damn good. There you go. Uh, Brian Hamilton wants to know how did how did Rick like wrestling in southeastern slash continental wrestling? Does he think Ron Fuller or Bob Armstrong could have made a good touring NWA champion? To my knowledge, this is the only NWA territory where no wrestler ever won the NWA championship. Do I think Bob Armstrong could have made a good world champion? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I. I. It's not that he couldn't have been. I don't think he wanted to travel like that. Yeah. Bob, you know that there's a reason. Some sometimes find people find a place, and I mean, to my knowledge, all the boys still live there now. The family, um, some, they find a place and they don't want to leave it. Right. And being a world champion, man. I mean, you know my schedule. I didn't go. Sometimes I was home for six months at a time. And I think Bob, like you know, with there that territory, you, the longest drive was Birmingham. Right. And you were home every night. It feels it. Uh, Pensacola is is like um, an underrated wrestling town. You know, yeah. you got Usos, Roman Reigns, Scott Armstrong. I mean, there's so many wrestling talent who have either it, exactly or decided to settle into Pensacola. I think that's where Arn met Aaron, his his wife. Exactly, was, and uh, all in I mean, that's it's um, Roy Jones Jr., Emmett Smith, Escambia High School. So crazy, yeah. It's crazy. Uh, Rich O'Mac says, I would love to hear a good Charles Robinson story. Come on, Rick. You got plenty of those. I'm sure. Charles Robinson. God, just, oh my God. I just, I don't have a, 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 like a really a fun story with him. He's another guy that, you know, he, he like he likes me being crazy, but he doesn't like to participate. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> He's just a great kid. I, I couldn't begin to say, I can, I do have a story, but I could never tell it. <laughs> <laughs> I have one, <laughs> but just God, I mean, the most respectful guy and, and yeah. le legitimately, you know, it, it, there's always a debate about things. Charles Robinson loves going to work as much as any human being alive. Yes. And he does anything the company asks of him. Yes. It's unheard of to Agreed. see a guy that will do anything and and to, to be part of it. And God darn, he's a great referee, too. Fantastic. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, he, 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 someday Charles Robinson, looking at some of the guys they put in the Hall of Fame now, and he needs to be a Hall of Fame. Tommy oh. Young should have been a long time ago. I agree. Uh, 